Hello, I'm Morgan Peckman of the Brooklyn Optimist. Today I'm here at the Park Slope Community Bookstore with Park Slope poet Lynn Chandok, uh, author of The View from Zero Bridge, a, a book of poetry that I've recently fallen in love with and wanted to talk with you about. Uh, Lynn, thank you so much for joining me this evening. Thank you so much for inviting me. For me, one of the things I felt was really striking was how you took kind of banal places in Brooklyn, or at least the areas that have become banal to me, like the 4th Avenue subway uh, overpass, um, something that I've seen so many times and infused it with uh, lyricism. Yes. And uh, I was wondering, what is it about Brooklyn that's inspiring to you? Hmm. There are certain times when you can walk down 7th Avenue late in the afternoon when the sun hits some of the churches, things like that. I mean, I think I'm always looking at how it looks. And I, th I think, I mean, I think Park Slope is beautiful. I really do. I mean, I, I walk around, if I'm walking around walking the dog at night and looking at the brownstones and how they are, I mean, I feel like visually it's very pleasing to me. And I think a lot of my work starts with those visual impressions. Um, there's a poem where I'm walking back from the synagogue that's way down 8th Avenue by 16th Street, I think. And that started from the experience of walking home that evening, and it was it was shortly after 9-11, um, and really having this sense of being in this beautiful sort of twilight place and thinking about how the buildings looked and then thinking about who was inside them. And, and sort of it spun out from there. But the original moment was that same twilight moment when all the, the brownstones just glow. We've heard a lot in, in the last couple of decades that poetry is ostensibly dead, that it's either maybe too enigmatic or academic or inaccessible or just that the, the, the times have moved beyond poetry. Right. And as a, as a teacher of poetry, how do you excite your high school students or your middle school students to want to be passionate about poetry? Um, well, I've been revising <laughs> the last couple of years. As a young teacher who didn't really know anything about poetry, and I taught my first group of fifth graders, you know, we're going to work on a poem now, you're not allowed to rhyme, because I had this idea that, you know, all rhymed poetry was something we just don't do anymore. and. Uh, that's a pretty sad thing, I think, for a 10-year-old to hear, you know, good poems don't rhyme. Well, sure enough, you know. That's almost <laughs> the most exciting part yeah, about poetry yeah. when you're a child. Right, it is, it is. And as an adult, when you come back to really great rhymed poetry and you hear what's going on or you realize, I mean, the th most thrilling thing for me now is to read through an entire poem and only realize at the end that it's rhymed. It's, it's an honor for me that someone has chosen to try to enter into this poem and I feel obligated to them not to confuse them and not to try to make them feel stupid. Um, I don't like that feeling when I'm reading, though I, I'm not saying that I like easy poetry. I, I feel like, you know, if a poem is really beautiful and you can see things right away and you can hear beautiful music right away, well, I'll give it every shot in the world and I'll go along with it, but if it just seems to be out there not wanting me involved with it, then that's al it's alienating. A lot of times when we think about poetry, we think about um, really bleak, depressing circumstances, the, the poet Modi, Baudelaire, Rimbaud, all the poets I love. Um, but. Um, for me, I felt that your poetry was very optimistic in a lot of ways, and I was wondering what has caused for you to be optimistic in this day and age and in Brooklyn? Well, um, I've actually, after, after a few of the early readings of, of the book in the fall, I, I came to the point where I was always closing my readings with one poem, which is the poem about um, it's actually uh, about someone, it turns out that I know, but I didn't realize that I knew him at the time, jo Joe Delfoss, who is uh, one of our neighbors here in Park Slope, who has a giant telescope and um, brings it out on evenings when there's uh, something really cool in the night sky. And, uh, and I end with that poem, and I, I think it's because he does this thing which is just simply a very kind gesture and a way of 
having other people see something beautiful and mysterious. Um, and I guess I'm optimistic because there are a lot of really beautiful and mysterious things to look at in the world and there are people who are interested in them and you see them here and you see them, I mean really if you keep your eyes open you see those people everywhere. There are people like that for me in India, um, people in lots of places who will point out to you something you didn't see that was really, that is stunning and it, you know it's hard not to be optimistic and you know raising children and being able to take them out too and and say you know look through this telescope and there there are four of Jupiter's moons look at them there they are um, well thank you so much for sharing with us thanks. what is beautiful and mysterious through your poetry thank you and uh, this is poet Lynn Chandok uh, this is her book the view from zero bridge and I want to thank very much the Park Slope Community Bookstore for giving us this space to have this wonderful interview.